I want to bring up the Mookie Betts argument real quick because I've seen it all over Twitter and talking to my buddy Dave Spampanato about it too. Um, Mookie Betts is essentially being crowned as the best player in baseball right now, which I think we need to put the brakes on a little bit there for a few reasons. Um, And I'm not saying that he isn't terrific because he is. I mean, there are so many reasons and so many things that he does well that it, it's one A and one B for me with him and Trout at the moment. But we do we remember how good Mike Trout is? Like, like can we seriously just, like, remember for a second how damn good Mike Trout is? And I think we would be saying a lot of the same things if we saw Mike Trout on a postseason roster. Yeah, he hasn't been there since 2014. He hasn't won a postseason game, and that largely isn't his fault because obviously he plays for an Angels organization that has just been proven incompetence over the last six or seven years. But I just want to throw the tires because I think there's a lot of recency bias in terms of how people are judging Mookie Betts. And he deserves all the credit in the world because he's been the best player in this postseason by a country mile, even with what Randy Rosarena is doing. But there's a reason Mike Trout probably deserves six MVPs right now. I mean, we we were talking last year about Mike Trout arguably being the best player in baseball history. I mean, this is a guy that does it all offensively. I think he's a better hitter than Mookie Betts. I'd give – Bet's the edge defensively, but his base runners are eerily similar to with Bet's probably getting a minor advantage. But Mike Trout is Mike Trout, guys. Like mm-hmm. let, let's let's take it easy for a second there. As good as Mookie is, we gotta remember just how good Mike Trout is. Yeah, I mean, look, right now Mike Trout is wasting away with the Angels, which really stinks as you know, a baseball fan, because you want to see your best player play in the biggest games and the Angels just haven't been able to get it done. And I think that's why Betts was brought up. That's why people were talking about Tati so much because they're playing in the impact games. I mean, and those are the players you're seeing in the nationally televised games. And look, Trout, he's playing at what, 1030 Eastern time, most of the time, 10, 10, whenever the games start. And no one on the East Coast is really watching him unless you're an avid baseball fan. So I feel like with that argument, I think recency bias is huge because if you watch Mike Trout, he's hands down the best player. And I know Mookie Betts is great, and I was saying how good he is. But right now, Mike Trout, I mean, there's a reason that he gets all the MVPs, wins the batting titles, hits a ton of home runs, looks amazing in center field. And again, I think it's a real shame, really, that we don't get to see him more often. Not enough people talk about him. And again, I mean, as good as some other guys, Mookie Betts, Tatis, they're all great. But to me, hands down, Trout's the best. Yeah, and it's not quite the same, but I almost see Trout as like a LeBron figure where he could realistically be MVP every season. He could realistically oh, take yeah. every award home every season, but people just kind of get used to him being that good, that the standard for him is so high that no one is surprised when he gets plays that at that level. Now, what you said with recency bias, I think that's exactly what I would chalk up these conversations between Mookie Betts versus Mike Trout, because even if you just look at all their stats, I can't think of one category where Mookie Betts is above Trout. I even stolen bases. I'm pretty sure Mike Trout has more. So I think, yeah, Mookie Betts might have got the whole country free tacos. That's awesome. Like, we love that. <laughs> that doesn't make him the greatest of all time. It doesn't even make, make him the greatest player this year. Now, do I think he's going to be the MVP of this World Series? Hands down. But I do think it's a little too early to have that conversation about him versus Mike Trout. I want to be clear here, too, because I think Mookie Betts is pretty clearly the second-best player in baseball right now. And and I do think he's close to Trout. Like, I'm, I'm not – I wasn't at this point last year, but I think Mike Trout and Mookie Betts, the window has gotten really close between them. However, this was, like, the first year that I can really say since 2012 that I – this is probably the first year I wouldn't have given Mike Trout the MVP – um, and that should just tell you how good Mike Trout is because there was a realistic argument that from 2012 to 2019, Mike Trout was probably the most valuable player in baseball every single year. And that's just how good Mike Trout is. And listen, we are talking right now, and he wasn't the MVP. I don't think he was the MVP this year, but I still think there's a really good argument that he deserves to be in the top three. And that that's the model of consistency that Trout has provided over – like. He's a consistent top two, three MVP candidate for the entire first, what, 10 years of his career. Hmm. That's insane. You just don't see that from anywhere. And I'm not saying that Mookie Betts isn't right there with Mike Trout because he is. But until we see Mookie consistently perform 
like the MVP candidate that Mike Trout is every year. And Mookie's right there. Like I said, Mookie is right there. And I think he's going to be that guy over the next few years. But he isn't there yet. I need to see at least one more year of full-on consistency because really over the last four years, we have seen that from Mookie. But you're talking about Mike Trout here. We're talking about a guy who has been graced as the best player in baseball since he entered the league. I need to slow it down. That, that's all I got to say about Mookie. Because I, I feel like I'm criticizing him too much here because I do love Mookie Betts, and he's been clearly the most impactful player in the postseason. But let, let's just slow the roll down just a little bit. No, yeah, completely agree. And I think that with Trout also, as you were saying, just the consistency of it, you put him in a 162-game season. I think this definitely goes a different way. I mean, not saying that Betts wouldn't be great over 162, but – Again, I feel like Trout just does it game in and game out with a team that's just not so good. I think a lot of people don't talk about that as well. I mean, look, to basically focus in for 162 games for, what, 10 years and only go to the postseason, I think, once. And, I mean, that's just a crazy and a master of his craft and something that, for me, I'm just, I mean, I'm amazed about because, again, he's just hands down to me one of the best players.